like a little bitty spot. Welcome everyone to a special holiday edition of Voices from the First Frontier. This is the time of year when we spend time with family, reflecting on the previous year, and we also take stock of the things that we value most. Today, we are in one of the places that has been bringing First Frontier Blair County families together for more than 100 years. Lake Mont Park is without a doubt one of those places that lifelong residents and newcomers alike have learned to value as a special, unique place in the heart of Blair County. We have with us today two First Frontier pioneers who are working to ensure this park continues to create great memories and a gathering place for uh, First Frontier families and next generation families and we're really glad that they're here today. Andrea Cohen, who represents the ownership group of the park, and Melissa V. Borney, who is the general manager of the park. We're really glad you guys are here today. Thank you. This is a special, special time of the year for certain. So, you know, all communities, let's say no matter where we are in the United States, all communities are made up of like these really special places, things that are really unique about uh, um, an area or a neighborhood. And Lake Mont Park has been one of those places for more than 100 years oldest roller coaster in the world, you know, just one of these traditional places. Um, we know it's gone through some transformation and it's been closed for a little while as we anticipate what, what comes next, sort of the, the next uh, viewing or the next experience for Lake Mont Park. And Andrea, your team has been working on that. Tell us a little bit about what, what, we, what we can expect as a part of all the renovations in the park. Well, we've been working really hard to rebrand the park. Uh, we want, wanted to do something to complement the other activities in Blair County. So we really looked at what our community needed. Uh, we're going to have four basketball courts. Uh, we're going to have two volleyball courts. We're going to have a regulation size miniature golf course designed uh, by a professional organization out of New Jer Jersey. We're re-theming our kids' uh, golf course. And we'll have a lot of the favorite rides that we had before, the roller coasters two roller coasters, so we have the Tin Lizzie, we're going to have go-karts, uh, we're going to have a revised uh, water park for the kids, so a lot of, a lot of fun activities. So you're, you're really, you're taking it back to sort of a, what it w once was, more of a passive recreation for, for families and anyone who really wants to experience a, a, you know, a really great traditional park, kind of taking it back to what it once was. Exactly. Um, we're, we're, the gates will be open, people can come in for free. Uh, they can take a picnic blanket and um, just just enjoy the green space, or they can uh, pick and choose what activities they want. I think one of the uh, one of the really interesting things about this park is the actual lake itself. You know, we we've got uh, it's, it's sort of rare to have an urban lake sitting right in the middle of a lot of the major thoroughfares and shopping districts, and we have this lake. Are, are, is there going to be improved access? Can folks experience the lake in a different way? We're doing um, paddle boats, new paddle boats that are going to be called the Lake Monsters. You can ride the Lake Monsters. They look like dragons, mm -hmm. and so they seat four people each. Um, so we're going to have those out there, and I think they're going to look really neat when people are going past on Route 36. And you, you mentioned the greenery. You know, we, I think we all, the longtime Blair County folks, you know, we remember the big trees, right? You know, everyone says, oh, it's too bad you can't grow those. We know we can't grow the trees fast enough to get them back right. to what they were, once were, but you're doing a lot of that greenery landscaping and, and to sort of bring that softer, greener feel back to the park. Well, a lot of the area that uh, was like the kids' playground area or, or the kids' rides area um, is all removed and the shale is being converted to green space. Um, so there will be two big green space areas for families to enjoy. Um, we created Naturescapes Foundation through the Cent Central Pennsylvania Community Foundation and uh, our goal with that foundation is that people can donate trees um, in memory wow. of a loved one mm -hmm. or in honor of a birth or just to beautify the park. So we're hoping that people will do trees and benches and uh, we might have a rabbit campaign, um, you know, just, just to have fun art, uh -huh. art around the park. That's a, good, that's a great idea, great idea. So we talked a lot about summer, but the highlight, we think, of the, really the, the maybe the entire year, right, is holiday lights on the lake. So we're sitting in what is essentially Santa's workshop. I mean, this, this place is completely decorated out. And uh, every year, uh, Holiday Lights and Lake brings thousands of people in. Well, we typically get in a year 
close to 20,000 cars that will come through. Um, you know, and we open uh, the Friday before Thanksgiving and we're open through the Sunday after New Year's. You'll notice when you go through the lights, there's signs everywhere. And that's because um, we have over 150 local businesses that have sponsored displays to help us um, have this event every year. And they've been, some of them have been with us for 22 years. Um, They've just been very supportive and people love to be a part of it and they put their holiday greetings on these signs and um, so we really appreciate all their help to, to keep this going every year. After you go through the lights, uh, you can pull into one of our parking spaces and come into this area which is um, obviously our gift shop area and then we have um, Santa in his sleigh and he can, the kids can visit with him or get photos with him and then we have our refreshment area and also we have um, a building filled with model trains that are um, put together by the Alto Model Train Museum and they have been doing this for most of the time that we've been open. We've, we've heard. Now last year we, we set up a hidden camera down at Railroad City for our holiday edition and, and we caught uh, the big guy himself because uh, we heard that he liked to frequent the craft brewery area and I, I know he's probably going to make another pass through there this year. But we also heard that actually here at Lights on the Lake is where he establishes his home south of the North Pole. So, and this is a big deal. I mean, I, have you heard this rumor? I have heard that rumor. Okay. So we were going to ask you, since we have you here, if it's okay for us to set up our hidden camera here this year to see if we can't, you know, prove that in some way, shape, or form. Can we do that? Certainly. Sure. Okay. Sounds sure. good. Though. Okay, Matt, we'll work on uh, getting our hidden camera set up and, and see what we can catch here over the next few days. But with that, I really want to thank both of you for being here today, giving us some insights in on the uh, park and the summer activities, and then of course expressing, uh, you know, allowing us to be here in the in the Santa's workshop and, and telling us about lights on the lakes. And I mean, it's a really, uh, really great venue, great uh, first frontier Blair County experience that we encourage everyone to come on out and, and uh, experience for yourself or for the first time if you've never been. Um, so with that, uh, from all of us here at the Altoona Blair County Development Corporation, Andrew is a board member of our uh, ABCD Corporation, uh, we want to wish everyone a, a great holiday season from our family to yours. Be safe out there, enjoy everything that uh, we have to offer here in the, in the First Frontier. And as tradition, uh, we always uh, end with a cheers. So grab your mug, oh, there we go, and uh, we'll do it. Cheers.